This is my VS2 Singer machine. It's a treadle. Uh, it uses a long bobbin shuttle and long bobbins. These are the empty bobbins, the full bobbins, and the bobbin shuttle. VS stands for vibrating shuttle. It was manufactured in 1889, and I'm going to show you how to wind a bobbin and how to thread the machine and run it. The first step to winding a bobbin is putting the thread on the top of the machine, running it through the top eye that's on the left, and bringing it down to the bobbin area. It's going to run through the bottom eye on the bobbin winding mechanism and the top eye on the bobbin winding mechanism and then it's going to go on to the bobbin that gets placed into the bobbin winding area. The first thing I like to do is take the thread and run it across the top of the bobbin like that. It's kind of tricky. And then I pull out the other end and I catch the tip of the spindle in there. Now my thread is caught here and it's going to go through those two eyes that I showed you and I'm going to trim away this extra thread here. I have to disengage the needle up and down and I do that by taking this knob and turning it towards me. <clears throat> and then to engage the bobbin winding mechanism, I pull the mechanism towards the belt so that the belt rolls on the end of the bobbin winding mechanism. Now to start winding the bobbin, all I have to do is pull the wheel towards me to get the motion started a little bit and then just start the treadle. And I think that's just about where it needs to be. So I'll snip the thread and take it off of the machine. So now I'll show you how to put it into the bullet-shaped shuttle, the bobbin casing. You can see the top is flat, that there is a point on one end with a notch, and there's the spring. It's kind of round. <clears throat> you hold the bobbin with the thread coming towards you over the top and to the right, around to the top and to the right. You slide that into your bobbin. And you hold the top of it with your finger. And you bring the thread down that line towards the end where the bobbin spring ends. And you pull it up again. And it comes magically underneath the spring. And if you keep pulling it up, it comes out to the left side of that little tab in there. And then it will run over the top of the tab and under the spring and out to the right. To re-engage the needle, take up and down, you tighten this so that now your needle moves again. <clears throat> now to put your bobbin in place, you slide open the shuttle doors here and here. You can see that when you turn your, knee, your wheel and you engage your treadle, that the bobbin shuttle moves back and forth. You want it to come all the way forward so that the hook on the bracket here is close to you. And then you take your bobbin with the flat side up and that notch visible and the thread coming out to the right and you gently place it into this shuttle so that it notches up and it just kind of drops into place there. 
You can see it's a little bit wiggly. I guess that's why it's vibrating. It's called a vibrating shuttle, too. It's the name of the machine. So anyway, it's in that spot, and it will move back and forth freely. So now you go ahead and you thread your machine. I'm going to use a different color on the top. And I'm going to use red so it's noticeable against the blue in the shuttle. You put it on the top of the machine. You bring the thread over. It goes into the top left hook up here. And from that eye on the top, it comes down in between these tension plates and behind the tension release thumb tab. Then it goes under that tension spring hook and up through the take-up lever on the left of the machine from front to back through that eye and then through that other little hook on the left side of the machine. Then you're going to slide it behind that little wire on the needle bar and then you thread it from left to right through the needle. There it is, left to right through the eye of the needle. You bring it down into the presser foot and around to the back. Now while I hold the needle, top needle thread in position, and I keep my shuttle thread off to the right, I crank down once, bring the needle to the top, very, very top position, and I pull up the bobbin thread through the throat plate. Now both threads are up and off to the back of the machine, and we're ready to sew. All we have to do is close the plates and put in our fabric. I'm picking a very bright fabric so we can see. I'm going to do double layer of the fabric put it in. I bring down my presser foot with the lever that's on the back and I give the wheel a little crank with my hand to get myself going and get my rhythm started and then I can just trottle away. Pivot, I can keep my needle in, lift my foot, put my foot down again. And then when I want to take it out of the machine, I make sure my needle is all the way up. I lift my presser foot. I can pull it off to the side, trim my fab, trim my threads, and there you have it. There's the stitch. I have red on the top and I have blue on the bottom. And it looks like the tension's pretty good. The blue doesn't pull through too much and the red doesn't pull down too much. That's it. A helpful tip if you're having trouble winding your bobbins, I took a piece of leather, a little scrap piece of leather, and I cut it into a circle so that it would fit perfectly inside that little hole where the end of your bobbin goes in. And I did that so that it would hold the bobbin nice and firm and so that the bobbin would spin while my wheel was spinning. When I first tried it without that little piece of leather in there, the wheel would engage with the belt and spin the bobbin winding mechanism just fine, but the bobbin was just staying stationary. It wasn't spinning with it. And now that I've got that little piece of leather in there, it spins nicely with it. So you just got to kind of make sure it's centered.